The increasing number of hospitals that were either publicly owned or had received public funds transformed the application of segregation in public policy. Ultimately, the massive government sponsorship of hospital construction <coughs> opened the way for legal challenges to segregation based on the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendments. It re rendered discrimination by private hospitals state action. Another important result of Hilburton was the expansion of teaching facilities. I talked about Charity Hospital in New Orleans. Um, teaching facilities represented 20% of all Hilburton projects and 30% of the total federal funding. Teaching hospitals were built in or near urban areas with large indigent populations so that they could serve as teaching material for the, the residents. Um, because medical school faculties remained all white, black physicians were excluded from Southern teaching hospitals like Grady and Charity. But at least some of the new federal hospitals did grant admitting rights to black doctors, and by 1956, the rates of staff integration in new Southern biracial hospitals were comparable to those of Northern hospitals. Because this was, after all, a nationwide issue. A lot of Northern hospitals did not grant admitting rights to blacks either, or black physicians either. Um, how much time do I have? Good more. Okay. Um, Biracial segregated hospitals faced mounting criticism during the late 40s. Uh, this is Crump Hospital in Memphis. Uh, they, black communities began to lobby for public funds to build uh, hospitals for private patients so that black physicians could have teaching facilities and nicer facilities to admit their paying patients because there were more and more facilities for uh, charity patients, but very few that would admit uh, private patients where their physicians could, could admit them. Um, the NAACP and, and National Medical Association started a campaign against racial discrimination in medical societies, medical education, and hospitals. The National NAACP, which had successfully integrated the Veterans Administration of Hospitals, adopted a new policy in 1952 that forbade any chapter to support private or public funding for all black hospitals or wards. Although substantial progress had been made toward equalizing the number of black and white Southern hospital beds, which is what black activists had wanted in the early 1940s, by 1952, Montague Cobb blasted the thousands of new black hospital beds as the Lux Jim Crow. Addressing the National NAACP Convention in June 1953, Cobb attacked Hilburton for presenting Quote, the threat of foisting on generations unborn the entrenched ghetto hospital system through the construction of new segregated hospitals, unquote. Among the NAACP and NMA's rank and file membership in the South, however, many still subscribe to a separatist self-help philosophy that focused on building and expanding black institutions. For the post-war South's growing black middle class, the Lux Jim Crow facilities opened the doors of modern health care to large numbers of African American consumers and practitioners. Half of the Hilburton facilities were built in the South. Mississippi, the poorest, most rural state with the largest percentage black population and the fewest hospital beds per capita in 1945, received the most Hilburton funding per capita. Of the top 15 states uh, to receive Hilburton funds, nine were Southern states and their combined African-American population was 7 million, which was then 52% of the total uh, black population of the U.S. In the South, Hilbert was a major factor in increasing the proportion of non-white hospital births from 24% in 1945, that means only one in four black infants were born in a hospital at the end of World War II, to 74% by 1960. That's a dramatic increase. Um, with federal aid, southern states built health facilities on an unprecedented scale during the waning years of Jim Crow, both meeting the South's immediate health needs and including <coughs> black patients and professionals in the mainstream healthcare system. The Lex Jim Crow hospitals were built in the rural and underserved areas where the majority of African Americans were concentrated and significantly increased care available to black and indigent patients, fundamentally changing segregation in the process. Without full burden, the Southern health care system would have remained grossly inadequate for patients of all races and dominated by private, all-white hospitals, 
concentrated in more prosperous urban areas. Early, done, okay. Um, these are the failures of Lexington Pro. Um, it benefited black patients more than professionals. It mitigated but didn't eliminate racial segregation and national health insurance was not possible until Medicare Medicaid was a partial solution in 65. Um, so, Deluxe Jim Crow is the bridge between the New Deal and uh, the Civil Rights Movement, and it's, it's really unique in public policy uh, in that way. Uh, thank you very much.